Hello, everybody. My name is Scott, and you are on Zeal Zaddy. This episode tonight of Old Gods of Appalachia is titled Black Blood. You can follow us everywhere at AdZealZaddy or AdZealZaddy RPG on TikTok. You can check out our D&D and our Cypher System supplements on DriveThruRPG. We have a new one about to drop that will be a pay what you want. So it'll be a way to kind of test out some of our, our uh, Cypher products that are out and on their way. One of my favorite commands during this whole thing is the clip command. You can use exclamation point clip and it will make a clip of the the uh, last 30 or 40 seconds. I think it's an amazing piece of technology in Twitch. I love it. Love going back and seeing the what people found to be their favorites. So you can use it judiciously if you would like. <clears throat> the opening and closing music is by OBP Musical. It was sung by Melody McClellan and composed by Nico Rhodes. The game of Old Gods of Appalachia is by Monty Cook Games, and of course the podcast is by Deep Nerd Media. We all know and love them. Uh, last warning, though, Old Gods of Appalachia is a horror campaign that may have material not suitable for all audiences. Listener discretion is advised. <laughs> have got our our new player and we're missing one tonight gone and getting married so we'll we'll let him out tonight but he don't he don't get no weeks off he needs to be back next week <laughs> why don't we start then tonight with walter why don't you let us know who you are and where they can find you evening y'all uh my name is robbie weiss i was once a podcaster in the ttrpg verse um and now i just like to play and have the opportunity to play alongside these wonderful folks as walter gwinnon the uh perceptive beekeeper sage who masters the swarm all right how about k not k tagan <laughs> i mean both technically are correct <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey y'all. Uh, I'm Kayla, just K, some version on the internet, depending on how and when I got to that social media platform. Uh, if you follow me on Twitter at just thinking K, all the links to everything's in my bio. So if you want some of the crazy things that come up in my head, which if you follow any UO publishing stuff, <laughs> you know the level of crazy and chaos that comes out of my head. Things that are too chaotic for UL publishing goes into my own stuff that you can get. <laughs> Nicole is laughing because she knows how chaotic UL publishing is, so it has to be bad. <laughs> um, I'm also the general manager of UL publishing, so check them out. We have our Haro the Blighted Plane book, which is getting close to actually being published. We're finishing up layout and things now for that. And keep an eye out for a wild space which will be having more info on the kickstarter and things of that in the future um i'm playing tagan foxcroft who is a perceptive tinkerer who crafts powerful objects i don't yeah. i i will see if it goes on because for those that were here last week you, oh boy you crafted powerful safety object last last <laughs> session that yeah now we need powerful. safety i need to craft a safety object around myself <laughs> it is the rarest object for you to create is one that is for safety <laughs> any chance you could uh craft some bubble wrap to wrap all of it <laughs> run it around us and although it is not mentioned quite enough around here we are zeal zaddy is a uo publishing partner we love their product we back everything they do and when harrow comes out there's a chance we will be running some harrow 
All right, uh, Brandon, not Brandon, Professor Hayes mm -hmm. or Dr. Hayes. Hello. Yep, I'm Brandon Hall playing um, Professor Irwin Hayes, the shifty speaker who speaks in tongues. I'm a longtime GM. I've run many games of Old Gods of Appalachia, a huge fan of Monty Cook games, and very excited to be here. All right, and Benny, our, our new one. Hi, I am Nicola. Uh, uh, Nicola the Druid on all the social places. I'm that one girl that runs uh, unnecessarily over-the-top charity streams on my channel, Druid Craft Productions. And most recently, you can find me over at Diversity Saves, producing uh, producing their uh, fundraising streams and charity streams. Um, and uh, Diversity Saves is a nonprofit. Uh, committed to creating a space in the TTRPG community for marginalized creators, um, diversitysaves.org. But tonight, I am playing Benny, the little orphan girl, uh, a hardy explorer that who who does something. We'll figure it out later. Yes. Uh, but that's me. Well, welcome back, family. Lots of folks love visiting nature for pleasure. They, they like to see it in its natural beauty, to sleep under the stars, all thanks to Teddy Roosevelt, of course, signing legislation, establishing the national parks across this great country. Just after the turn of century, 1901 to 1909, if I remember correctly. And of course, people come to see the flowers and the trees and the cute animals and having picnics and experiencing untainted wind and water. But those who live anywhere in Appalachia knows that sometimes nature looks back at us. What then when you cross a threshold between natural and unnatural to find yourself being spied on? We are going to start off joining little Benny waking up in an unfamiliar surrounding with pain like like they never had in their head in their <sighs> aching body and some terrible squeaky singing coming from the next room what what happened you're in a bed in a room full of beds Lisa's warm Oh my gosh, that singing. It's like a oh, chorus. Oh, I don't even remember what. A chorus? Yeah, I mean, you were traveling with, of course, a, a revival. Yeah. So at this point, I'm used to it, but it's still, it's a little bit different and a little bit loud. I don't even remember what happened. Okay. Uh, Benny, like, collects herself, like... Just, just like a quick inventory of like uh, head, shoulders, knees, toes. Okay. Yeah, uh, everything's there. I mean, you're short a few, uh, you know, a few coins maybe here or there, but. Oh, know, yeah. Not hmm. surprising in a place like this. Then you notice um, the cross up on the wall. You realize you're in a church. Again. Oh, yeah. I wonder if that's that lady's church. Okay. And then Benny's going to, as absolutely quietly as possible, um, like get up and like start to like look around in the surroundings, like look for her like pack and like then also look for the father and, and just kind of like assess, but also extremely quietly so like nobody catches her you, your pack is at the foot of the bed just leaning against the the bed post okay it seems to be un un uh, unaffected untouched okay okay good uh there are windows she in likes... here but they do not open they are stained glass windows okay then benny's gonna does she also see the father's stuff? Yes. Father Bartimaeus' stuff? At the foot yeah. of the bed, right next to the one you were at. 
Okay. So she kind of tucks it a little bit to like hide all that stuff just a little bit better um, mm -hmm. before she begins to like sneak into like another room to like if the windows don't open it's like oh my i gotta find i gotta find people but but i don't want to talk to them but i need to like lay the situation i know what that we're in guilt guilty hole probably i don't think we left but like she's she's stepping out to inspect what's going on yeah, we you get to the door and you can hear outside the only door in, into this room is where the singing is, not the singing, the cacophony of people singing is on the other side of, and you can tell by the light coming underneath that it is either daylight or there are a lot of lamps out there, one or the other. Ugh. Benny contemplates just hiding under the bed for the rest of the day, uh, but then doesn't um, because there's stuff. So um, can she peek through like the door to like ever so slightly just sure. see like maybe the next exit or all the people? Yeah. You does it lead right into the sanctuary? It does. It is a room right off the sanctuary hall, and you see that there is um, a chorus of odd oddities of people. Like every every configuration is out there. Yeah. Every level of dress and accoutrement is there, and there is someone leading them. And there is off on the table to the side. You see there are there's food. It looks like it looks like people were eating just a little while ago, and you can smell the food. Question is, are you hungry or are you nauseous? I feel like she's a little nauseous because whatever she is. If she drank last night, it was probably more than she's ever drank in her entire life. You and don't with her drinking. little itty bitty. You may have been well, drinking, yeah, but you don't remember it. I don't remember it. Um, and so she's kind of feeling a little nauseous. Um, but like she never passes up food, even if she doesn't eat it right away. Um, it, she's also kind of putting it a little, a little bit together, like. This is probably the church that we were supposed to come to. So, like, I could probably get some of that food later. But also, I could sneak over there and just, like, take some bread and put it in my pocket. Like, walking bread. Yeah. Um, everybody needs and, walking bread. <laughs> everybody needs walking bread. Um, so, I have both fleet of foot, which allows me to move quickly. And I have slip into shadow. That's going to cost me something, but she's going to attempt to like get through the door and then like crawl through the pews or something to like get over there without like interrupting the choir or being seen at all. All um, right. So you're able to, with all the noise they're making, they're all looking, the, looking not in this direction, although they could peek over but they could see you if they look this way but they seem to be paying attention to the whoever is directing them in yeah, some the new church some singers new tend to get a little distracted and the, there are some pews that give you kind of a a, a a low point you can get to and be protected vis visually from them so you're able to scoot along the, the edge of that back to the food table which is not far from the door either She's going to grab some walking bread for her pocket. Um, may, I don't know if there's a little meat. She may grab a little bite of meat or something. There is a little uh, bit of before... dried meat, not the tastiest thing. But I mean, but food, food is food. That's true. <laughs> food is oh, walking jerky. <laughs> uh, so then we add walking jerky to the pocket. Um, and then she attempts to sneak all the way out of the sanctuary. 
All right, so you, you put the food you need in your pocket, you sneak over to the door, and when you open the door, darn it, and there's a woman already out there who turns and sees you stand, coming out. Well, you must be little Benny. Miss Benny, uh, I'm pleased to meet you. I'm Adeline Rose. You're... When Benny is spotted, she like stands up super straight and is, um, she like stands up super straight and just kind of like, you know, be, tries to be a little presentable. Um, and she goes, yes, ma'am, I, I am. I am Benny. It's nice. It's a pleasure to meet you. So, uh, Mr. Uh, Bartimaeus, uh, he has headed into town for a bit with some some people he met that uh, doing the things he does, I suppose. He told me to make sure you were fed and watered and taken good care of. How you feeling? It, apparently you were drinking last night, and I don't mean drinking water. I, I might have, ma'am. I don't, I don't really remember. Uh, but I got, I got some bread and some meat, and um, I think, I think I best catch up with, I think I best catch up with fa with the father. Um, well, I could tell you where he went to, and maybe that would help you on your, on your excursion into into town. Do you know where town is? A little bit. <clears throat> how, how old are you? Eleven. Eleven. Oh, you know, in a year they'll start recruiting you to the mines. Just you know, they they are always looking for the next twelve year old that needs needs a little coin, sawmill too. Just in case you're you're interested in a little work while you're here. Um, the uh, the bed you're in that that will be your bed while you're here while you're staying. I see you have your pack with you. Do you have your pack with you? Or do you have it under the bed? You said you hid it. Oh, no, I, I left it under the bed with yeah. his stuff. You, so all your stuff is is together there. Is there anything I can get for you before you head out to town? Do you need you need someone to to walk you to town so you know where it is? Uh, I appreciate it, ma'am. Uh, I I will be able to find my way. I'm very good at directions. Uh, I could, thank you very much. Well, I can tell you. I'll give you the simplest directions there are. And she points it away, saying okay. the bridge is that way. As soon as you cross the bridge, you're in Guilty Hole. I mean, you're in Guilty okay. Hole now, but you're in Guilty Hole proper once you cross the bridge. That's where all the businesses and stuff are. But Mr. Bar Bartimaeus is not there. He has gone to, actually, did he? Did she know that he was going to meet with Walter? I don't think she knew that. Uh <laughs> I believe he was. I'm going pretty to sure T.J. Booker, and it's so. only because I, I'm pretty sure, and it's only because I just watched the episode today, <laughs> that she only knew that he was going into town to find a guide to go to the cemetery. Yeah, not yeah. who the guide right. ended up being, or if they right. actually went to the cemetery. Exactly. So, I think that she probably has no idea where yeah. he ended up. He but. was looking for a guide to the cemeteries, uh, which I do not know who that guy would be but there are a lot of people in town who know how to find a lot of these things um is there anything you would need from me before you you start hoofing it uh no ma'am thank you i i have some food for the road uh, and that i can snack on while i go there all right well make sure you take care the the there's some woods between here and there and they can be dangerous Luckily, it's daytime. You got a few hours till the night comes. Thank you. All right, you be on your way. And she points the her to the to the bridge. And Benny like fast walks out to get out as quickly as possible. And then as soon as she's like outside the door, she like slouches again <laughs> 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 and just and and begins to walk in the direction of the bridge. Uh, All right, because even if she doesn't find Father Bartimaeus, she's, you know, there are other things in town for her to to look at, sure, uh, or visit. 
or yeah. a pet. You may be a ward, but you're definitely not a dependent. No. <laughs> Back on the other side of the town, we have been engaged in a game of peekaboo with the bleeding tree. At least Professor Hayes has been in a has been playing peekaboo with this tree who and I is staring at you for a moment while you're on the side opposite your friends. And at that moment, you see that their, the bark itself has swirls that are unnatural for other trees you have seen. Not unnatural, that's not the right word. Unlike. And those swirls, they, they might be in the forms of symbols you have seen in your your collection and the eye closes hard like there was no eye there at all leaving a knot like you would see in any other tree and that's when you, it dawns on you that this tree has sharp edges to the bark almost like thorns not everywhere but enough that one particularly wrong step, you could be just stuck. Close to it. And I try to put my hand out and touch the bark. And um, I'll use inside voice, which lets me communicate with something you know, telepathically, essentially, and try to reach out to it and say, why have you brought me here? And you hear in your mind for the first time that, you, that you've that you heard in, in a long, long time, the one thing you've probably been wanting to hear is you have knowledge. Eat more. The other, the other group of you, Tegan and Walter and uh, Father Bartimaeus, see Professor Hayes kind of standing on the other side of the tree. He he leaned his you know one hand on onto the side of it, and he's kind of talking to himself. Not looking at the tree, kind of just looking out, and it's almost like when you think, you kind of raise your eyes, and your head is elsewhere. I'm just gonna like stay away out of the root line that we established, but circle around so I can at least get to the same side as him, kind of just like scuttling around. You For vaguely, <laughs> Professor Hayes, you vaguely recognize Tegan kind of moving in this direction, but your thoughts are in other places. Tegan, though, you turn that corner and you see a foot on the ground in a shoe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Probably about as terrified as when I came here and tapped it the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I'm 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 gonna start doing that like that shoe thing that people who live in the mountains do to like mountain life. Be like, go on, get, you don't get that close to something that's grown in a skull. It ain't from the green. It's not good. What are you doing, boy? Get get it. It's like trying to scare off the creature from the tree. It stirs you from your thought, and there's no more. It's like it breaks the connection, even almost like. It was it disturbed it. Hmm. Why why did you why did you do that? <laughs> Boy, do you think something we call the bleeding tree is something you want to go poking? <laughs> Every everything bleeds. <clears throat> that that's not a good thing to argue <laughs> your point. You're a professor. <laughs> More <laughs> ominous words have never been said. Yeah, like, there's like, I bleed, you bleed, doesn't mean I want you to go poke at me. <laughs> this thing's, this thing's a lot. 
Yeah, Professor, no, no, duh. I think okay. it's about time you take a few steps away from that tree. Like a lot, like a lot of steps. I suggest outside of the root circle. <laughs> Slowly nods and takes a, a step backward. I'm also going to like elbow Walt and be like, kind of like nodding to where I see this, this foot. <laughs> Clearly not attached to a body foot. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Alarmed. Um. <laughs> Is there any details that I recognize of the shoe slash foot? You do not recognize the shoe. Let me rephrase that. It is not the foot of anybody that you know, but it does look like the kind of shoe that the church lends when they have people that do not have footwear. So, you have seen yeah. them before. People who might not be missed if they go missing. Cool, 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 cool. Walt uh, breathes a, a certain amount of relief uh, as one, he was kind of, there, there was the the conflicting thought of, is that one of my kin? Is that my <laughs> wife, my daughter? Right. But then, just not, not, it's, it's just not one of them. You realize that there are, while you're paying attention to this, there are, there are kind of flies buzzing around the foot. And there are one or two flies in your beard where normally there would be bees. And that is... Ew. Unsettling. Yeah. I, I, I immediately am, am disheveled by it as that's just not right and not my style. And while you're standing there, you see that coming from one of the flowers... Because it has flowers that hang down low, that there are flies that kind of come out of the flowers, like they are, like they are the ones that are uh, pollinating instead of the bees. This particular tree, and since you are so natural. close, you realize that the smell of that flower is like rotten meat. It smells like a corpse. Well, I mean, there's a foot. I suspect there might be one or two of those around. And I'm just like continuing to like try and wait the professor as far away because I'm like, I'm close, but he needs to get. <laughs> the professor has his book out and I'm looking through it, trying to match runes. And you just hear him reading these like words. It's, you know, very similar to what he was mumbling while he had his hand on the tree, just trying to recite them and match them and see if he knows them. So and I, as you push him, he's like almost like not even there. He's just kind yeah, of I was scared. like, if you're not moving, I have a way to get you to move faster, which is grab the book and run. But if you're moving, oh, we're yes. just gonna continue. <laughs> <laughs> like herding the cat back away from the thing you don't want them to be in. And you 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 put a foot right outside the the root the root edge of the tree, and you feel like you're not there anymore with it like it it's almost like there is a place of communion within there that is it you it feels different when you're not even it the bark the telephone on you even the bark <laughs> doesn't even seem to look like the forms you saw while you were there like they mm. like they changed but you never saw nothing change Well, it just looks like a tree to me. I think, uh, I guess we've seen all we have to see here, hey? Tegan's going to do the, like, the, the what gif? You <laughs> 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 should, should probably find who's missing a foot in town, eh? Like, looking at Walter and the, the father, <laughs> like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I saw the thing. You did. Yeah, let's get out of here. <laughs> I knew I knew we shouldn't have come out here. <laughs> yep, yep. Let's did. get out of here before it gets darker. I I and don't not I do not want to be in the dark with this thing. <laughs> I think we ought to head back to that shoe. It look it looks like it's from one of the churches. Well, it's not just a shoe. It is a foot in that shoe. The the shoe that is on the the, the the foot 
God's rested soul. Uh, looks like it's from one of the churches. Maybe we should bring the foot with us. I'm a religious person, Father, but like, should we get the foot? Do you have a funeral for a foot when you don't got a body? <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> and the father's like, of course we should bring the foot back. It, it, if that is all that remains of this person, they deserve proper burial. And if that is not all that remains, maybe there's someone walking around who has lost a foot. Okay. I, I, I get you there. Uh, hey, look over that way. <laughs> Everyone like <laughs> away from the foot. <laughs> and once people are paying attention, she's going to use draw item to get the foot to her. So she doesn't have to go back in the circle. <laughs> <laughs> and y'all turn back and, and, Oh, Taken look, it was the... a lot closer than, than I thought. <laughs> Here you go, Father. You Taken can hold on to that. You ran to that tree and back real quick. Want to see yep. you again? <laughs> I'm a quick scamper. Yeah. Can't keep me down. Uh, okay, let's get the heck out of here. And Father Bartimaeus says, I have, I have got to rest some. My head is just exploding, and uh, I still feel a bit... I can uh, drop you at. He's not drunk the, anymore because you'd put the yeah. heart in the box. I can drop you at the cabin. Just remember, don't touch anything. Ninety-five percent likely to explode, but there is a <laughs> cot in there you could sleep I, on that I'm pretty sure won't hurt you. I, I need to check on on my ward too. She has got to be waking up anytime. I mean, yes, she had been drinking, and she's a little thing. But uh, at some point, she's going to wake up and she's not going to know where she is, I think. You sleep and take the foot. Oh, God, the folks are going to be in my house. T leave the foot outside the door. <laughs> sleep and we'll go get her and come back. All right, I, I, could, I could do that. I'm a little okay. concerned about how, you, how joyfully you said 95% could explode. I, I mean, it. I mean, anything can explode if you try hard enough, Father. <laughs> I got a lot of things in there. <laughs> Just don't knock anything right, well, over. You'll be fine. You'll her, be fine. Her name is <laughs> Benny, and she's quite independent, you know. So, but she talks a bigger game, I think, than uh, than she really is. Like every. 10 or 11 year old she's 11 by the way i just gonna look for a strange kid i ain't seen around town before <laughs> that'd probably work yeah <laughs> so you take uh the father to to your place where he can lay down for a bit and he almost immediately falls asleep exhausted head hurting and uh back on the other side of the bridge Benny, you are walking the, the street towards the the um, bridge. You can see the buildings on the other side of the bridge where Guilty Hole proper is, the, the downtown at least. Downtown meaning about 15 buildings and some homes that wrap around that. And you hear some shuffling through the brush off to the side. Um, hmm, she, nah, she dumb, uh, she's, <laughs> she like, stop, oh. I have to have a pro, is it that, wait, is it this? <laughs> like that, yeah, <laughs> except it's nose Second. a little bit longer and you see under the brush no, you're being I... looked at by a fox. <gasps> okay. Excuse me while I get rid of the cat that is destroying my setup. Um uh she like she uh, has fully stopped at this point. Um and pulls she was kind of like picking at the bread a little bit, just just eating it. Um and she puts the walking bread back and pulls out the walking jerky um and tears off a little bit of it. And like throws it towards the bush. All right. When you when you throw it, hold on, I want to look at something real quick. 
I die. Scene ends on Benny, who just fed a crazy <laughs> fox. He, yes. All foxes are crazy. Uh, <clears throat> the fox <clears throat> stays under the under the brush and, and just keeps it, it. Looked at it when it fell to the ground, but it kept looking at you and kind of. You could tell it's it's unnerved. It does not want to come out and into the open. And it peeks up and down the road a little bit too here and there. <laughs> I was not expecting that. That was perfect. Um. And then it turns and runs. Can I, like, quickly survey the area to, like, see if something else was unnerving it? Or if I thought I, like, or if it was just me, but, like, see what made the fox, like, run off? Sure. It was probably me, but I don't want to believe that. Yeah, you can you can survey the area. <clears throat> hmm. have any skill for that um i have a uh, danger sense but that applies to initiative so i don't yeah. think i actually do yeah you look around you don't see nothing else so it must have been <clears throat> you <sighs> okay i mean there are foxes That's all fine. up and down these these hollows hollers anyway Benny does that little, like, kid thing where you, like, kick the ground a little bit. Um, and then she goes and picks up the jerky, because you don't waste jerky. Um, <laughs> and it picks it up and puts it back in her pocket and just, like, continues walking. And you get to the bridge. You, uh, as you're crossing, it runs over a creek called Eleven Pole Creek. And uh, there are... It is cold here. It is winter, obviously. But it is not... It is not snowy or frozen. Just a cold day. 35, 36 degrees. It's above freezing, barely. Um, so you do see a few uh, critters in, in and about the water. Fish, probably. And in town, you see that there is the remains up the road of some big bonfire. And there are people sitting around on the uh, the decks around in front of the businesses near it. And they all look like they're half asleep, waking up, whatever it is. And the revival tent, the revival, you remember it was here. It is gone. <gasps> Fully gone? Fully gone. All the carts and everything? All the carts, everything. Scott, why do you break my heart? <laughs> um, uh, Benny, like, is, like, quickly, like, not fully running, but just that, like, quick dodgy thing where she's, like, checking out, like, did it move? Like she's like she yeah, ducks behind see, a building. And yeah, like, you can see ruts and stuff in the in the dirt where the carts had gone in a circle and pulled away and headed down the street. And as you're running around in that in the kind of uh, crazy circle trying to find what happened, you realize that fox is playing with you from right behind, and it nips at your tail and pulls on your pants. Oh. And then it You're lets bad. go and runs back, runs away a bit. Um she's going to like she's going to play back. She's going to like you know, kind of kind of like sneak around and and uh mimic what the fox was doing and but she also gets like low to the ground. Um to not be like standing ominously, but she's gonna try and like mimic what the fox is doing. Um, yeah. The ground, but cold. also not getting in people's way. Well, there are no people here because this is in the middle of a big okay. field. It, it, they they basically use the the center of town. There's a big field here right. that uh, is normally open, except when the revival is there, obviously. And there are people going about 
about the business and you notice as you're playing with this fox and there are some people taking notice of you playing with a fox uh you're you're going to get bit like that not if i bite but not if i bite first y'all y'all and be biting no foxes they got a lot more teeth and they are sharp you not you are not blessed with those kinds of uh utensils for dealing with with you know that kind of teeth um, and it nips a little at, bit your, of... at your leg and pulls on your pant and you slip over and fall and let's go right uh, away. And, and when it sees that person, it runs to the, to the Creek and it, it has this beautiful leap over that Creek. The whole thing lands on the other side and up, goes up the bank on the other. And once again, disappears into the bush, into the, into the rough. Y'all right. Um, that little bit of like orphan shame um, kicks in um, and she like stands up and she dusts herself off. I'm okay. It was a friendly fox and we were just having a good time. Have a good day. And like tries to walk away from this person. <laughs> and they just keep walking. They, they leave you alone. And um, you see the town. Having uh having begrudgingly accepted that the revival is gone um and therefore all the revival carts are gone and cages um she begins to like meander a little bit um like kind of poking her head a little bit into like the store windows not not like private homes but like store windows trying to keep an eye out for like father Bartimaeus or, you know, just, just kind of, yeah. But also just like taking it in and just like walking around a little bit. Yeah. And it, it starts getting dark a little bit after you, you get into town. It, it's, it hits dusk. You know, it took some time to walk to town and by now it's starting to get dark and you can see that there are some people starting to kind of wake up from their, their drunken stupor. <laughs> you can smell them when you get close. That they are, they are still. They've been drinking. <clears throat> Most of them are around that big pile of ash in the in that fire pit. And uh, TJ or not TJ, a man you don't know comes out of a place called TJ Booker's. Hey kid, you you okay? You look, you look lost. Oh, no, I'm okay. I'm just... Uh... And then she runs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and then she, she, like... But, like, runs and, like, ducks around someplace. Um, uh, did the revival arrive early enough that we would have known that that bonfire was the John Barleycorn, or did we only see it when it was burning? Would you have seen that? Um, I don't think you, you know what? Maybe you would have seen it. You had a little time when you got here. You could have seen. Yeah, I would say you have seen. You You did see it before it went up. Okay, so she kind of has an idea about like yeah, what it was, what the heck happened. Um. Uh, yeah. So then she goes back to doing the like wandering. But if it seems like it's going to get too late, she'll walk back towards the church where she had come from. But she's also like basically scoping this place out. Um. All right. Kind of okay. just trying to get the little lay of the land orphan style right so you spend some time skulking a little bit yeah yeah but in an adorable way back at uh at tagan's you drop off the father and the three of you are there ready to head out i suppose i will make sure the foot's outside the door it's i want it inside 
<laughs> not inside. I the have wall. a line. I draw. I draw dead people parts. <laughs> are not allowed. Everything else is fine. Uh, <laughs> Some people put muddy shoes by the back door. <laughs> <Body parts. laughs> it's just one shoe too. It's just a singular shoe with a foot in it by the front door. That out of keep intruders out. <laughs> yep. That, that, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna take a closer look at that that foot and shoe combo now. It uh, and I am uh. Uh, trained in identifying objects as well as finding or noticing small details. I know, I'll, I'll provide the help action by being like, here, use this and hand a stick to him to poke it. <laughs> you know, I was expecting like magnifying glass, maybe some goggles. No, blood. you poke it first, no, clearly. <laughs> here. It has been, you can tell by, by spending a little time that it has been there long enough that the the flesh inside is rotting away is rotting away it's very smelly obviously and the the most disturbing part is the fact that it is a fairly small shoe like it's probably a child's foot it could be a child or a, just a small could have been a small someone hmm. but yeah does it look like it was snapped off or like it just naturally dislocated from decomposition of a body? <laughs> you got any medical kind of capability? Uh, me? Medical? No. But I do have understanding um, and uh, I also have the finding and noticing small details and identifying objects. Um, I can also do the thing where I see stuff that i shouldn't see so <laughs> it it does look broken like it was broken mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. cool 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 glad we left that bleeding tree then <laughs> just gonna keep that tidbit to myself for the moment and be like okay <laughs> so kid we got we gotta find a kid <laughs> so do, uh do, do i notice any like uh tag on the shoe or no, he, it, it is unmarked, but you do recognize these shoes. These are the ones that the church is given um, by the leather worker in town for people that need uh, shoes shoes or footwear or whatever. Both that have church come shoes in. or is there one in particular? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask, too. There's only one in town. At the... Uh, is it the Presbyterian one or the... Uh, Methodist one. It, well, no, the, the two churches use the same shoes. Well, oh. I know, but I mean, it was just like, is there a way to tell which shoe? <laughs> which, yeah, yeah. Well, Nike's like, versus Reeboks. Yeah, like, do they have a war <laughs> with, like, ah, uh, Methodist symbol versus Presbyterian symbol are the shoes? Um, <laughs> Methodists or Reebok? No, they they use the same. <laughs> I shoes. agree with that. <laughs> they take what they are what they are off what they are offered by oh. as, as a gift. So probably we'll have to stop by both to see if anyone's missing. I want to stop at uh, what was the which which church did uh, Father Bartimaeus leave his board at? The Presbyterian the, Church. Y'all yeah. want to stop over there first and take a yeah. peek in on 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 his board? Yeah, we, we'll we go we'll go through town in case they got out of there. Cause I I'm gonna tell you, someone left me alone at eleven, I'd be out of that church <laughs> <laughs> quicker than a firecracker and a cat. That sounds like a saying that happened in this time period. <laughs> <laughs> and you 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 do your walk in, you get to town. And the three of you, when you get to town, it, it's it's dark, obviously. And there are still people kind of lounging about the effigy. And when one of them gets up, you see him kind of stumble forward. And then uh, lean, lays back down where he was. And TJ comes on, comes out. Come on, y'all. You need to go home. You can't be sleeping here for days on end. 
Ain't that that whole point of this week? <laughs> uh, they need to be... Well, yeah, we will be doing some more drinking tonight, but they can't even stand up. What'd you give these folk? Me? I, I want some of that. Dang. <laughs> the same stuff everybody else had. These people look like they're quite a bit farther off. I don't think they I, drink any more than anyone else. At that, Tegan's like elbowing Walter again because we didn't just deal with an artifact for drunkenness. <laughs> <laughs> but we took care of that. I don't know what to tell you. <clears throat> and, uh, Benny, you see these three folks come into town from another direction and <clears throat> there are one of them has kind of unusual attire like the other two typical of different places one of them does definitely doesn't look like they're from guilty hole one of them definitely looks like he is from guilty hole <laughs> and one of them don't look like they belong anywhere that's probably uh, uh, accurate. glasses <laughs> goggles above their hat <laughs> All kinds I of think, oddities. I think Benny would also remember barely, very fuzzy, no no clue what happened, but would remember interacting with the professor at the church. So like, oh yeah. And and okay. also absolutely fascinated by these goggles. Um uh is gonna kind of like the mosey and the wandering, the the when you get close to someplace, but you don't want to look like you're trying to get close to someplace. <laughs> so you just kind of like, mm. and it's just kind of like getting a little close to to like listen in on what they're doing. Uh, like, mm, what are these people? What, what you uh you see the almost obvious ward <laughs> skulking about trying to listen in. Cheerly, Tegan. I'm just gonna give a whistle and be like, "Hey, you, Betty, <laughs> Betty, <laughs> Bar Father Barty <laughs> told us to come check you out." Uh, I immediately look that away. Full body, like. Oh. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, I'm Benny. Uh, you see, have you have you seen Father Bartimaeus? Yeah, he's passed out at the cabin. He got, well, it's a long story, but if you want to see Father Barty looking like you feel right now. <laughs> hmm. She like does that like squinty eyed thing and like looks between the three of them kind of just like making a judgment call real quick. It's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> It Caleb's just take like, an 11 year old to make a judgment call. <laughs> like, it's, Caleb's like hyperventilating, like, this kid just accepted to go in the wood with three strangers. <laughs> I mean, she was just really drunk, so. Yeah. Let, let, let's grab some, some grub first before we head back out to the cabin. I'm sure Father Barty could use it too. Don't tell him I called him that. He does not like it, but he ain't here. <laughs> It's okay. I sometimes call him sir because he keeps calling me Bernice. Because <laughs> he's it. father. Yeah. His father. I call him sir because he calls me Bernice. I take it you ain't a fan of Bernice then. And while you're talking to... I mean, it's just... No, go on, go on. I mean, it's just... It's long. Mm. That's fair. While you are talking... Uh... Uh, Walter, you see down the road in front of the general store, Carolyn Crandall is is going in, and she's got a little bit of a limp going. Looks like maybe she fell or something. I, I give a little little elbow to Tegan, like, hey, you see that? That's Miss Crandall. Is, is that the kind of, like, limp of I hurt my foot or I don't have a foot? <laughs> That's an important question. I don't know if she'd be wearing a church shoe. 
It had to be F. You're muted. What was the question? Sorry. It, it, there's no question. There's just banter. Yeah, I was like, it, I'm assuming she has a foot still, and it just hurt her leg, and it is not missing an appendage. She's not missing an appendage, no. Okay. <laughs> that, was a, that was a real long pause that made, that <laughs> made me like question. I had to contemplate what you were asking. <laughs> now, was she headed into the general store? Yes. Looks like we got ourselves a captive uh, interview. I, you know, it, it, y'all are welcome to follow me, but I have some questions for Miss Crandall. Tegan's first internal thought was, we could knock her out and take her back to the cabin. <laughs> 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 we could her with the I shoot. got something on me that will do that, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I immediately start walking over right. to the general store. And All I'll right. back Walter up because so far, I mean, I haven't died and we've done pretty well. So. <laughs> and you... Also, Benny, it's nice to meet you, but I got some business to attend to. Well, now so do I. And Benny is like power walking behind him. <laughs> <laughs> We got business. <laughs> this little intimidating eleven-year-old, like puffed up behind Walter. You get to the store, and what are you doing, Professor Hayes? Keeping an eye on Benny. I told the father I'd watch her, and part of me feels responsible still. And as you see, uh, Tegan and Walter and Benny go into the store. Walking out the woods, you see those two people you had seen before coming into town and they go past you. They nod their, their hat evening. They head into the hotel. Was it just the professor who saw those? Yes. Okay. Oh. Um, which direction did they come from? Did they come from Walter's house direction? I guess, sure. I mean, that is all of Northeast, so yeah, yeah. they came from Northeast. <laughs> <In> general. <laughs> out the woods from the Northeast Durley direction. They got a lot of property out there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. All right. I'll rush inside after Walter to let him in. Walter, you get in and you see uh, Carolyn Crandall is talking to the the store manager and the store manager is getting some iodine and you see on the counter there's iodine and some hydrogen peroxide. Iodine and hydrogen peroxide? Yeah. Um, I kind of elbow Tegan. and I'm like, any idea what she might be doing with iodine and hydrogen peroxide? Is she hurt? I so I know what I would be doing with it, which is not what most people would be doing. <laughs> but she probably is her. <laughs> um. So I, I, I just, you know, I kind of let let the the irked irkedness of of our whole situation with the tree kind of take over me a little bit. And I say. I kind of just pipe up. Well, I guess before I pipe up, is there anybody else in the general store besides Miss Crandall and the shopkeep? What about what about the? Oh, you wait for them to finish, or you interrupt? Uh, well, oh, of her purchasing? Yeah. Um, I guess before I interrupt anybody, I, I, I guess I do want to take quick note of if anybody else is in the store. No one else is in the store. All right. As soon as I walk in then and take note of that, I'm piping up. All right. Ms. Crandall. And she she turns uh, even even Mr. Gwannon. I believe you and I have some business to attend to. Do do I owe you for some honey or some meat? I, I don't remember taking out no credit or nothing. No, I've got a few questions for you. Um uh, all right. Uh, and she puts a few coins down to pay for her, her purchase. And he just puts the stuff in a poke and she, she takes it. Uh, and she she takes notice of, of Benny there and Tegan. 
evening, uh, Tegan. How, how are you doing tonight? Ma'am, I'm fine. I'm also going to provide the help action because I am strangely trained in intimidating another um, creature. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what, what can I what can I do you for? I feel like I have an entourage. Yeah. You do have an entourage. <laughs> let's go, let's go. <laughs> it's just an 11 year, oh my goodness. You have an entourage of the crazy one and I... and the bomber. I look, I look, wait, so I'm not the crazy one. <laughs> That's anyone. Now, Miss Crandall, oh. and, and Walter's got his big, his, uh, his big boy voice on right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and he is also intimidate, uh, is trained in intimidating another creature. Um, now, I know you and your boys have been out at the old, uh, the bleeding tree. And I, I, I make no attempt to not say that. I make no attempt to make that quiet. Right. Mm -hmm. What have y'all been doing out there? What makes you think that I was at the bleeding tree or my boys? What was it? And this is a question to you, Scott. You, you <laughs> saw them. I saw them. Oh, you saw them one <laughs> evening. I done seen you out there. Have, have, have you been drinking too much mead? And she and when she says don't it, you go tippy toeing around it. And when she says it, she backs away because she sees like you and Tay, and she's like, "Oh, I may not have. That may not be a smart what position to be taken." <laughs> um, there is a whole damn branch of that bleeding tree missing, ma'am. You got a lot to answer for. Uh, could, could we step outside or something? I'd rather not discuss things out about anything in here. I don't think that's a good idea. Say out loud. Oh, you're. I you're think we can talk behind. right here. All right. Well, I, I can tell you, and she raised her voice. I don't go to the bleeding tree. I am afraid of that thing like everyone else. And then she gulps. <laughs> 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 um, your, your your little one there. She's looking at you, Tegan. I guess this your little one is kind of staring at me like I did something. Like, do I owe you a nickel or something? <laughs> Tegan internally is like my little one. <laughs> what? And then it's like, oh yeah, we have a kid with us. <laughs> um, I think you owe us a lot, all a lot more than a nickel. <laughs> yeah, you all want an explanation and one quick because uh, we didn't find some great things up there after we saw you messing with that. So, so what you're saying is you're going out to the bleeding tree. You've been out there messing with it. That's what it sounds like to me. Not like I've been the one going out there. You want us to bring the father in this? The one that they brought in to investigate? Perhaps the foot. The Catholic priest? Yeah. He's on your track now, ma'am. Since we're throwing all our cards on the table, how about that effigy that y'all made in the uh, in the town square? Well, all right. I'm gonna. I am gonna do, admit to something here. Something I never admitted to. I've been considering because of the fear that everyone's been having. I've been considering cutting that tree down because it is just a terrible omen on this town. But I ain't doing nothing else. I do run a sawmill, and I would love to cut that thing up and, and you know, parts that wood for other places. But that's that's the end of it. It doesn't sound like something you want to do with a bad tree. <laughs> <laughs> you want and, to tell me why you decided to, instead of pruning the thing, you decided to take samples? I'm not sure what you mean by taking samples. All I... All I've ever done is gone out there to inspect whether it would be cuttable. And honestly, we ain't got no saw long enough to get through that thing. I'd have to order a saw all the way from probably Pennsylvania or something. We don't have we don't have all day to speak with this person. And I'm gonna use I'm gonna stand in front of the door and I'm gonna use terrifying <laughs> presence. <laughs> Which means I convince her that I'm 
it's her worst nightmare. <laughs> she has to be with a short range and understand me. So I start to speak to her. And as I do, my voice starts to change, at least to her. And whatever her worst nightmare, something she fears terribly, I start to become that thing. And inside her mind, she starts to hear my voice with like a, an edge of like nails scratching on a chalkboard almost as the words um, come out. Maybe it's not not clear whether it's coming out of my mouth or if it's in her mind but i start to say you you'll tell us while you why you were at that tree miss you'll tell us now do you need to make a roll for that power let me see yeah i would have to roll against it yeah okay so you would you please make that roll Terrifying. Just got chills. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, Professor Ed with Lana, right? <laughs> I'm, and, uh, I'm here for it. <laughs> I'm uh, specialized in intimidation in case that matters. Of course you yeah. are. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we all specialized in intimidation? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Except oh, for Benny. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I got a uh, an 11 and then specialized. All right. So you... Describe what everyone but uh, Carolyn sees and hears. Like, is it <laughs> they different probably... what each what she sees or feels or hears from what everyone else hears? What she sees is different, yes. But they would hear my voice change probably to that other language, whatever the language of this book is. And I start essentially speaking in tongues of whatever creature or faction this <laughs> book belongs to. So... All y'all hear Erwin step forward and start not mumbling, really kind of reciting words that you don't recognize from some language you don't know. Megan, is he speaking Similish? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Sumer, Mary, Mary, Sumeri, yeah. Sumeri, that's what it sounds like. <laughs> and was that Frabble Joe I heard? Lamouche? <laughs> and Carolyn steps back and falls, you know, knocks over some cans, trips on the ground. And when she does, she she does not let her eyes disconnect from Irwin. I, I I was trying to get cuttings to see if I if I could grow trees that size, not as big as that, but cuttable. That's all I was doing. I was getting some samples. And I was with you, you notice um, Walter when she falls but she has a big, like a black and blue area on her leg that looks like there's a, a gash or a small cut in it of some kind on her leg. Uh, am I able to tell? Like, does it look as though it could be torn from, say, the thorn of a tree? As a matter of fact, it looks like there's a splinter in there of some kind. Oh! Oh, no, no, no tree people. And she pulls her, her, she is wearing a dress. She pulls the dress down over her leg as she backs away and tries to steady herself. I'm sorry, Mr. Hayes. I, I'm, I, I, I will not go out to the tree no more. I was trying to get some samples to see if I could... You know, the, the sawmill's not making enough money and I'm getting pressure. I got to bring in some bigger, some bigger trees. And, you know, it, it's just the kind of thing you got to do. Sometimes you got to look at cutting down the thing that everyone's afraid of anyway. Why not? Ma'am, it seems like maybe we need to take you to uh, this father that's in town because that leg ain't look good and not in the usual way. I, I know injuries. That's why, that's why I got iodine and hydrogen peroxide. I got an injury, so I'm getting the medicine I need to take care of it. Tegan omits normally she's the cause of injuries, which is why she knows injuries. Um, <laughs> so Walter uh, bends down to to help her up and kind of does a whole 180 on his on his demeanor and pulls both good, good cop and bad cop in, in a matter of 30 seconds or so. Um now, Ms. Crandall, since clearly uh, the professor is now the bad cop. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she's not even looking at you. She's looking at Professor Hayes at Irwin. Now, Ms. Crandall, I seen that gash on your leg. Now let's get you. Let's get you over to. Uh, let's take y'all out. Let's take you out to Gazzy's and get you all fixed up. 
I can take and, care of myself. I don't need the help of the likes of all of you all. And she just never stops breaking. Like, Ma'am, we help each other. We help each other here. You know, we know now you. Now listen. We don't know him. Let's get you to Granny Woman. Make sure you're taken care of. That don't back look, it up, Walter. That don't look good. And uh, if you don't mind me, mind me saying it, I can tell it ain't from nothing that uh, you should have been messing around in. So why don't you Maybe. tell us what you experienced while you're out there? When I went to get my samples, I got poked by the tree. It's got, you know, it's got some thorns sometimes on its bark, and it got me there. What else did you see? What, what you mean, like? Anything funny? Anything smell funny? Oh, that tree has a stench like, like, like death, I guess. Like dead flesh or something, like rotten stuff. Were there any uh, flowers when you were there taking samples? Yeah, it has the flowers. Sometimes they bloom at night. <laughs> Did any of your boys, anybody else get hurt while y'all were down there? No, honestly, I don't remember leaving there. I just found myself at home. They said that I'd passed out, probably from the pain of the of the splinter. Hmm. Um, now, if you don't mind me being a little forward here, do you mind if I take a closer look at that? More forward? Like <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I could just ha ask uh, my professor friend over here to have a word with you again, if that's what you like. And her face just goes sour. Like, go ahead, you, you can a ask me whatever you want. And she still doesn't break. Like, she is. Her eyes do not let Irwin. Like exit them, like she even barely blinks at this point. Not <laughs> keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> Tegan's already goggles down, like magnifiers down, pulling out some like things to poke and prod and get the thing out. You got some tweezers in there or something? I, I, I'm sure I probably have something. <laughs> Flips open big knife. <laughs> <laughs> big knife. <laughs> You think you can get that splinter out? Oh yeah, look at this split. Um, we want we want to keep the leg though, right? Um, yeah, of course I want to keep my legs. Okay, okay, it's substitute just with that other one. Yeah, I mean it's just it's just a longer process if we wanted to keep the leg. So like, I got it though. <laughs> kind of like disinfect the the knife that she flipped out. She looks at you. I think, I think I'll go to Gazzy. That's probably a good choice. We'd be more than happy to help you take that. I, I can yeah, make well, it. Well, I know where her house is. Well, why don't we help you on out there? Um. Do you, do you got to? Yeah, I feel like we got to, man. You seen you limping pretty good. Mm-hmm. We want to make sure you get to where you were headed. And she gulps. <laughs> we're uh, too intimidating. I, I'll, I'll, uh, it's all Benny. It's all Benny. Um, <laughs> I'll drop terrifying presents and I'll say, besides, it looks like you've been seeing things. Uh. <laughs> uh. Maybe, maybe Might be I'm... some poison in that splinter. You never know. You can never be too safe. Um. Sure, you you, you all can escort me to to Gazzy's if if you if you got to. It's not it's not required, of course. I, I know I know where it is. I I can walk in. I'm not my leg ain't broken or nothing. It's just poked. I think it's best if we have somebody who knows what they're looking at. No offense taken. Uh, None taken. So let's <laughs> close the knife. Puts it away. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, she picks up her bag that had her iodine and, and hydrogen peroxide in it. And 
I, I suppose we're going now. Yeah. You want me to carry that for you while we're on our way, or you need some help walking? I ain't, I ain't like, broken that bad. It's just a poke in the leg with a, a splinter. Ain't nothing. I got my bag. And, you know, she All runs right, a huh? sawmill. She's probably pretty tough. I hope so. <laughs> Although, clearly, she can get taken down by a splinter. <laughs> I mean, it's a splinter from the bleeding tree. I think we all take down a bag with that one. Fair enough. <laughs> and you head out. And when you get out there, she kind of like looks at, in the direction of the bridge, which is where you got to cross. All right, let's, let's go. And she starts walking. When we get to the granny woman... I think Tegan's going to take her aside for a moment and be like, uh, be very careful because she's got a piece of the bleeding tree in her because she's been messing with it. And that's what we need to get out of her. I think even before we get to the to, to her, though, like during the walk, um, Benny's going to like saddle up next to Tegan and just, can I try on your goggles? <laughs> Do you want a pair of kids? Can I try on your funny glasses? I don't think she knows we're going to do Do you want a pair, kid? I got a <gasps> spare set in the cabin if you want a pair. That'd be really cool. Also, what is a bleeding tree? <laughs> uh, So think like the biggest, scariest, stabbiest tree you could ever think of Uh, by like a factor of 10 and add like weeping blood sap to it i guess uh, uh, what 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 hey what my friend here means is she asked um, the question she gets a legitimate answer she doesn't know she's a kid you just you just see benny like nodding like uh-huh uh-huh what well, walter gets uh -huh. out his uh I, I once had a daughter voice and uh <laughs> he's like um well uh there's this tree and if uh, a little kid ever goes out to it during the day or the night time um they it will eat you kid they don't get eaten it. yep, yep. <laughs> don't, don't go to yep. it at least your foot okay. <laughs> father barney didn't even like it he was like bad juju bad juju so like don't don't go near it okay but like real bl like people blood uh, <laughs> and you can see like tegan draws it out where like She's considering the possibility maybe it is real people blood since they found a corpse part. <laughs> <laughs> who be determined? <laughs> okay. That's weird. Yeah, yeah. Well, welcome to Guilty Ho. <laughs> when, when you're walking, Benny, you notice that there are some eyes following you when you cross the, the bridge. You're the only one that sees them, and they're low to the ground. You kind of recognize the, the eye shape. She, like, is keeping an eye, like, tracking, but realizes that now that she's in a group of people, she can't just, like, run off. <laughs> and so I think she takes her walking jerky and, like, tears it to, like, slyly just drop like a path uh behind us okay. um you know every couple dozen feet um just small little bits to try and you know keep the fox it uh interested and tegan you notice that benny keeps looking back mm -hmm. after a while <laughs> 